as we know about how to incorporate these marketing principles in creation or crafting of the strategic sales plan, let us move on to the next objective of this week that is to know what do you understand or what do we understand by informed decisions are and how sales forecasting methods can help us making these decisions that are very much informed by data and information. So, what is the importance of informed decision? Most companies rely on their real time historical data to guide them in their decision making process. Right? However, making strategic decisions from these static reports is easier said than done for most executives and key stakeholders. Why? Because there are many micro and macro decisions that are made every day in large companies with complex data interrelationships that no one can visualize. So, this leads to poor uninformed decisions that cost companies billions of dollars. Going ahead, often or not these reports and plans are hard to decipher. They are not easy to understand, right? So, they are no longer accurate or even sometimes they are not feasible as well. So, decision makers find themselves in limbo, unable to decide what to do, resulting in last minute uninformed decisioning that happens in every company. So, the result of this decision making gap is that plans and business decisions are not driven by data or information for say. So, not, they are not aligned with KPIs, the key performance indicators and the business goals as well, often leading to below par productivity, performance and profitability for the businesses. Now, look at these some examples from the past. In 2000, the Blockbuster, a famous video renting company in US, declined the offer to buy Netflix and see the results today, where the Netflix is and where the Blockbuster is, right? Again, two years just behind this deal, in 1998, Yahoo declined the offer to buy the algorithm from Google and it, the Google was kind of, you know, offering the algorithm for just $1 million. And now look at today's market. Where is Yahoo and where is Google? Google almost can, you know, drives 98 percent of search traffic across the internet. So, that is the power of that algorithm that, you know, find beneficial for Google as a company, but Yahoo, you know, it lags way behind in the competition. So, business leaders sometimes base their decisions on their instincts and experiences, which is not good at all for the businesses for their future. So, smarter decision making means making decisions that are most likely to help companies move toward their goals. So, traditionally the driving force behind decision making has been the experience and instincts of as business leaders or CEOs for that say, but 90 percent of small businesses and startups fail only because of this reason only. Now, again there is another statistics, businesses that base decisions on data and not, not instincts or experience, experiences of their CEOs or leadership are 19 times more likely to be profitable. So, what does this data suggest us? So, what is informed decision making is all about? So, it is the gathering of facts and information that may be relevant to the decision. So, the gathering of the facts, the collection of the information is the first step. Then making sense out of that particular information, right? Interpreting that information through critical analysis and then it is utilizing all relevant resources or sources of information, knowledge and training and experience to make a calculated call. So, that is all about the informed decision making is all about. So, how informed decision making can be done using data? So, sales has traditionally been seen as a more of an art than a science driven by sales reps intuitions. With buyers changing behavior and growing expectations, sales professionals are nowadays relying more on data as the time is being passing. So, for instance, a LinkedIn survey found that 56 percent of sales professionals are using data to target accounts and a 54 percent increase is in those using sales intelligence tools since 2018. So, large number of companies are nowadays utilizing this sales intelligence and analytics to make their calculated calls about businesses and customers as well. The COVID pandemic again has you know kind of appended the world of sales has hastened the shift towards more data driven sales. So, how data driven approaches to sales takes place? So, we have so, it may benefit companies in five different ways, right? It may give uh, improved segmentation capability to companies, right? So, they can prioritize high value customers and those with the highest propensity to buy. So, the first step in marketing as we say like you know segmenting, like identifying uh, your target segments. So, even the data collected from sales operations or sales teams can actually benefit companies to improve their segmentation strategies as well. Second benefit 
of data driven approach to sales that it gives strong value propositions for the company right so what value different types of customers derive from their kind of solutions or products so that kind of insight can be collected through this data driven approach better pricing of the product is another benefit that can be offered through this approach so it it it's fair somewhere that is you know you are balancing profitability with customers affordability so that's an important kind of you know sweet spot that a customer between a customer and a company has to identify coming to the next the, this data driven approach also provides alignment with customer journeys so that you can have a seamless and personalized experience across all channels that you are going to provide to your customers whether you are into a business of products or services as well and then finally it also gives an effective content strategy to the company so what types of content assets are most appropriate for engaging your customers so customer engagement is a buzzword today right and to engage your customers across the funnel that is traveling right from lead and converting him like identifying the prospect coming to the lead stage and then again customer stage across the funnel companies are using different types of content different types of channels to reach out to their customers and in a way if these strategies are based on data and information that is collected through these sales funnels and everywhere it gives to an effective content strategy to pull your customers to your products and services then how to do that how can we go ahead with data driven approach that's where before that we need to understand something we need to go back and where we can plan for how we are going to use data and for that we have to look at the concept called as forecasting let's look at what forecasting is and how it is you know coming into the picture of sales management that is sales forecasting so forecasting we usually in a day to day life we encounter a lot of forecast even if on watching tv we know that there is a news anchor who will giving forecast for this weekend whether it will rain whether it will be a hot day tomorrow or something like that similarly sales people also get into these kind of business the business environment in sales is complex and dynamic there are a number of forecasting methods available and which one to choose then right so there is a confusion and often forecasts are incorrect so you have to be repeating again the same and same kind of process again so as to increase your predictability right so nevertheless sales manager must continue to forecast and to work on improving their forecasting procedures even if they are failing again and again they are missing their targets but it's something which is a continuous process a sales manager has to do forecasting refers to the practice of predicting what will happen in the future by taking into consideration events in the past and present so you have something in your past and present that is you have some data related to your sales like right? sales data and then you are predicting something like you know what will happen in the future what kind of sales i can predict like right? what kind of dollar revenue i can predict for my businesses or my product across different sectors forecast it involves three types of levels to be considered first you are forecasting for a particular product you need to consider a particular geographic region and you have to forecast for a particular time period so these are the three factors that define a particular forecast right so if you look at this example that is there on the screen there are three different factors again broken down into multiple kind of you know sub factors so for product level you can forecast sales for industry for company level product line level product form and even product item as well for time period you can forecast for short range like you know maybe you are just forecasting for the next quarter that is 3 months medium range where you are mostly forecasting for another next one year ahead and long range which is around 3 to 5 years right so that's different time periods that you are considering to forecast for your product industry or whatever kind of you know level you want to and then you are considering a particular geographic area do you want to forecast the sales of let's say car for a particular country or across the world or a particular region a particular territory or even particular customers as well right the customers who are buying hatchbacks versus the customers who are buying let's say suvs you have to forecast the customer is different so you have to do different forecasting processes or kind of you know calculations for both of these two different customers so what is being forecast is most important so there are different forecast one can do with so there are two factors to decide what you are exactly doing right so first is are you doing something at industry level or firm level that's the one factor and are you going to forecast for best possible results or expected results for given strategy 
So, he, this first option that is best possible results is for across all strategies combined and expected results for given strategy, let us say for example, a particular sales promotion that you are running in a particular territory or region or per particular product category. So, for that particular strategy of sales promotion, what sales or you know, what kind of forecast you are making. So, if you are doing kind of you know let us say expected results for given strategy across industry, we call it as a market forecast. And if you are doing it for a particular firm level that is your company something like that, then it belongs to a sales forecast. So, we call it as a sales forecast. Let us look at the definitions of these four kind of you know uh, forecasts. So, market potential is the best possible level of industry sales in a given geographic area for a specific period. So, you are not talking about any specific strategy here. Market forecast, it is the expected level of industry sales given a specific industry strategy in a given geographic area for a specific time period. Then coming to sales potential, the best possible level of firm sales in a given geographic area for a specific period, right. And then coming to the what we are actually interested in is sales forecast, which is nothing but the expected level of firm sales given a specific sales strategy given in a geographical area for a specific time of period. So, that is so they are very close, but they are a different kind of you know kind of concepts in forecast. So, forecasting approaches there are two types of forecasting approaches first is called as a top down approach. So, what starts here is you forecast at a company level or a country level or something like that you then again go down to one level below you go for industry level then you go into a sales potential for a company in that particular industry and then you go for a company sales forecast and then you again divide it again at the level of zones, regions, districts, territories and even accounts. So, you are starting from the large kind of you know at the large macro scenario and you are broken down your sales forecasting that how much particular country will sell in this country, how I am going to sell in this particular state, in this particular state I am going to how I am going to sell across these 2, 3 tier 1 cities in tier 1, 2, 3 cities how I am going to target or what kind of sales I can expect from this kind of particular customers X versus customer Y who is who is interested in the same product. So, this is which, which called as a top down approach where there is a different exactly opposite of this is bottom up approach. Here you ask your sales persons to forecast accounts. So, let us say for a medical representative of a pharmaceutical company, he will come up with a forecast for his particular drug that he is selling in the particular region or territory. Then he will all the medical reps along with you know their reports they will report to a territory manager and then the territory forecasts are made. Then these forecasts are then again feed into the system and again at the zonal or kind of you know regional level the forecasts are combined to aggregate or make up one uh, final uh, regional level kind of a forecast. And then across all regions all the forecast regional forecasts were collected and then they are kind of you know combined to form a company sales forecast. So, here we are going from bottom to up that is why it is called as a bottom up approach for forecasting. Coming to sales forecasting, so now we know what forecast is and what are the two different approaches. Now, what is mean by sales forecasting? Sales forecasting is process of estimating future revenue by predicting the amount of product or service a sales unit that is a sales unit can be a salesman, a sales team or even a company that particular sales unit will sell in the next week, month, quarter or a year. So, it is nothing but the time period that we are talking about and this is about the unit that is making the sales or at level which you are talking about the particular forecasting. So, are you forecasting at salesman level, salesperson level or you are forecasting for a particular sales team that is handling a different kind of product portfolio or are you talking about a sales forecasting for entire company considering all kinds of you know categories of products and services that it is operating into. So, at, at its simplest a sales forecast is a projected measure of how a market will respond to a company's go to market efforts. So, how my particular market whether it can be a region, whether it can be a particular territory or whether it is a country itself how it will react or how it will respond to my company's go to market efforts. And that is what nothing but its sales forecasting is all about. So, why is sales forecasting important? So, before delving into what are the different types of or techniques of sales forecasting methods, let us understand why it is important, why this sales forecasting process is important for a business. So, sales forecasting can help across all the kind of you know functions or department that are there in the company. So, for example, 
It will help finance to develop budgets for capacity plans and hiring, right? Because how much you are going to sell will guide what kinds of funds you will be required, right? Then coming to the production or supply chain management department, the sales forecasting figures will help them or the manager of that particular department to plan their production cycle well in advance. Like, you know, they can have the material purchase at its place, right? Before, like, you know, they, they don't want to go out of shortage for that. When there is high demand, it's not kind of, you know, way to go ahead without having, a, you know, adequate stock with the company. And then for sales itself, the sales forecasting will go ahead helping them in terms of territory and quota planning and then even deciding the sales strategy as well. What kind of sales strategy you are going to use based on the sales forecasting figures that you want to achieve. Sales forecast provide the basis of the following sales management decisions. So again, within sales management also, there are different decisions that, are, that can be influenced by sales forecasting, right? So what kind of sales forecast is there and what kind of projected sales the company wants to achieve. So like for example, determining sales force size. So if you want to have, you know, kind of, you know, increase your product or increase your sales by volume in terms of, let's say 150%, 200%, you will require that kind of sales force to work on the fee. So the determining the accurate sales size of the sales force is a crucial decision to achieve any sales forecast target, right? So designing territories, again, that's a, another different objective or decision that is guided by the sales for sales figures. Establishing sales quotas and budgets, we already covered that, and determining sales compensation level as well. Evaluating sales performance, salesperson sales performances, and evaluating prospective accounts as well. Many of the companies use different categories to basket their customers. Like if there is a Pareto's rule that, that talks about 80-20, right? So 20% of customers will give you 80% of business in value, right? And then the rest of the 80% of customers might just generate just 20% of revenue for you. So as a company, you will need to identify which customer you will put in which basket, whether a particular custom, a customer is kind of, you know, high account, like, you know, giving high revenues to you. You have to follow up with him regularly. You need to have a sales for and you need to have maintain a good relationship with him or that particular business for the sake. So evaluating prospective accounts is also something which is guided by sales forecasting or the figures that are coming out of this sales forecasting exercise. Now coming to the sales forecasting techniques. Broadly, there are two types, qualitative and quantitative. And there are again different techniques or tools that can be used under each of this. So there is a difference is that the quantitative are usually looked at as a most more objective, more mathematical kind of uh, techniques. Whereas qualitative, we are relying mostly on the experts' opinions, experts' opinions as well as juries and all. And even in some case, we are directly contacting customers to get their feedback about kind of you know what kind of sales or what kind of purchases they are going to take or buy from the particular company. And based on that, we are estimating or we are forecasting sales figures for us. So qualitative methods includes survey of buyer intentions, jury of executive opinion. Delphi method and Salesforce composite method. So these are the four methods. We will discuss those in detail. And there is something called as a, under quantitative, there are four different techniques. One is first is moving averages. Second one is exponential smoothing. Then decomposition method. And the finally we will look at regression analysis as well. So let's deep dive and look each of this in detail. So first in qualitative is survey of buyer intentions. So any procedure that asks individual accounts about their purchasing plans for a future period and translate these figures or responses into account forecast. So the intended purchases by accounts can be obtained through various means. Like, you know, you can have the mail survey, then you can have a telephone surveys, you can have personal interviews with your customers and you will ask them about, you know, how much you're going to buy from us in the next year, something like that. So for example, Companies such as Dow Chemical and HP, which is Havlett Packard, have asked their business customers for feedback regarding intended future needs. But there is a catch. Customer intentions may be distorted due to buyers' unwillingness to put much effort into predicting future needs. Customers sometimes not sure you know, what kind of quantity they are going to buy from you, right? And buyers are often unwilling to reveal plans of selling a vendor's product out of fear competitors may retaliate if they find out. So again, there is a competition pressure as well. Like no, no one wants to disclose what they're going to buy for the next one year, something like that. And again, looking at the macro environmental conditions, which are 
again out of control for any kind of a business, it is very hard to put in the right number of figures into the system, right. Coming to the second one that is qualitative method is a jury of executive opinion method. Any approach in which executives of the firm use their expert knowledge to forecast sales to individual accounts. So, combined estimates made by executives from marketing, finance, production and all department including purchasing, then they average their views and calculate the fun final kind of you know number that is expected out of this particular product or services. Separate forecast might be obtained from managers in different functional areas as well. These forecasts are then average or discussed by the managers until a consensus forecast for each account is reached. So, here in the simplest way, this is a kind of you know opinion, executive opinion method where we ask experts in particular domain to sit together and kind of you know forecast for each business account that how much future business can be expected from that particular buyer or customer. So, team based approaches such as these are believed to result in more accurate long range industry level forecasts than individually, individually based for approaches. So, because there is a team coming together giving different kind of you know information into the system as we said we have to have a data backed inform decision making right. So, when the team comes into a picture as compared to a single CEO or CXO for that say taking all the calls it will be always a beneficial for the com company to go ahead and have, a, have the more accurate numbers in terms of sales. Coming to the next qualitative method that is a Delphi method. So, here it out here this is how it looks. So, there is a questionnaire there is a structured questionnaire we have and answers need to be given anonymously and the answers are only visible by one to the one of the moderator. So, we will circulate this questionnaire to all the experts right. They after the first round participant evaluate if they agree to the reformulation and what. So, once the questioner gets to the expert, he will quote some figure on that based on his own kind of you know experts expertise and opinion, he, will, he or she will put some figure. Then again all the figures that combine then coming back to the average of something like that figures. Again the next question set of questionnaire with a real kind of you know refined figures are again given back to the same kind of experts and they are again analyzed. So, the iteration happens again and again until and unless there is a consensus or saturation of responses. So, the basic procedure involves selection of a panel managers, panel of managers from within the firm. Each member panel submits anonymous forecast for each account. Then these forecasts are summarized into a report that is sent to each panel member again. The report present descriptive statistic concerning the submitted forecast with reasons for the lowest and highest forecast. Panel members then review this information and then again submit anonymous individual forecast. So, it is iterating again and again. So, it is happening again and again and this procedure is repeated until the forecast for individual accounts converge into a consensus. So, once you finally achieve a final common figure from all the respondents or experts, you stop there and you go ahead with that particular kind of a sales figure. The last one is the Salesforce composite method under, under qualitative uh, sales forecasting technique. This method involves each salesperson making a product by product forecast right for their particular sales territory. Individual forecast are built up to produce a company forecast and this is sometimes termed as a grassroots approach as well. Then each salesperson's forecast must be agreed with their manager and divisional manager where the appropriate and in and eventually the sales manager agrees the final composite forecast. So, in roughly it is called as detecting differences in figures as well. So, how it happens? It is again a format of a bottom up approach where let us say you ask all kind of medical representatives working in a particular pharmaceutical company to make some forecast in their own region or the territory or the area that they are working in. Then the, all the four or five medical represent, representatives or marketing representatives or sales representatives for that say, they agree, they kind of converge their data and even the territory manager or area manager to whom they are reporting, he will have his own forecast for the area. And then they sit together and come to a common figure, right. So, they kind of you know detect the differences in figures and they settle down in one figure. Then all the area managers working under a particular regional manager will kind of you know collate their all area reports 
and then the regional manager he will he or she will have his own or her own kind of you know regional report or forecast and then they again all the regional manager sits with all the area managers and they kind of you know again detect the differences in the figures and come to a kind of you know commonly agreed term or figure for the sales and then again all the regional man managers again repeat the process and they sit with the national sales manager who already has his own kind of national sales forecast and they again detect the differences in the figures and come to a final figure and then in a way that you know it's a more like a bottom up approach where each and every individual in the line in the sales management department works together to build up the common kind of you know final figure that they expect across country in this process so now let's look at what are the different techniques we have under quantitative basket so in quantitative sales forecasting technique the first one is moving averages here we develop a company forecast by calculating the average company sales for the previous years so now in quantitative techniques we are mostly using the previous sales data to come at a conclusion that what we are expecting in this year right so the company sales forecast for next year is the average of actual company sales for the past 3 years past 6 years or some other number of years as well let's look at this example so there are some actual sales happening from 2012 to 2020 and here's the formula that we are going to use so sales forecast for the next year let's say for 2020 is equal to actual sales for past 2 or 4 years so now it again at the discretion of sales manager or someone who is forecasting for this particular product or sales category is that what number of years he or she wants to take so let's say actual sales for 2 years so here we will take the actual sales for last 2 years right it is 18 and 2018 and 2019 and then we divide by number 2 it's a simple kind of you know average that we are taking for the last 2 years some companies if there is a large variation between the data or the sales figures they may go ahead with by taking more number of years into the calculation let's say for 4 years then you will you will sum all the sales values right from 17 16 17 18 19 and then you sum it and divide it by 4 and then you arrive at a particular value here for example let's say 9000 uh, 9867000 so that's how a, this is a very simple average method but there is a catch right so this method weights actual company sales for previous years equally in generating the forecast for the next year but that's not the case in a normal situation right so most of the times like for example we had the covid pandemic and all last year's data may not give an accurate picture that what you are going to sell in this year so it's important to give some weightage to the sales that are happen in the last few years and that's why that makes us to come into or comes to the next kind of you know modified nature of that particular moving average method which is called as a exponential smoothing a type is a type of moving average method only again except that the company sales in the most recent year are weighted differently from company sales in the past so you assign some weightage to a particular sales that you have done or accomplished in the last year as comp not not as against equal that you are doing that we were doing in terms of moving average method again look at this example so here i am giving an actual uh, the weightage assigned to the last year sales is 20% that is 0.2 so whatever i am expecting in 2020 will be calculated like alpha which is i am i am taking 0.2 or 20% so i am forecasting that my sales forecast for next year is equal to alpha into actual sales this year right in 2019 right plus 1 minus alpha that leaves us like 1 minus 0.2 that is 0.8 in this case into this year's sales forecast so what we forecasted earlier for that particular uh, this particular year right so that's how this formula works and it it's it, it actually takes into account any dynamic changes that are expected in the market right so a critical aspect of this method involves determining the appropriate weight alpha as i said for this method a manager or a sales manager has to take a decision what kind of alpha he wants to take if you look in the same example there are three different alphas taken right so 
at first it's 20 percent the next year i'm giving 50 percent weightage to this year's sales right that's why i'm taking alpha at 0 0.5 and in the last option i am giving 80 percent weightage to the you know actual sales that are happened this year that is taking the alpha to 0 0.8 and in each case you will find differences in the values that are forecasted right so there are differences based on what kind of alpha a particular manager is choosing whether he is taking 20 percent 50 percent or even 80 percent for say and that's what make it more kind of you know again going back to the intuition and expertise of a manager coming to the next method is a decomposition method it involves different procedures that break down previous company sales data into four major components trend, cycle, seasonal and erratic events. These components are then reincorporated to produce the sales forecast. Let's go ahead with an example. It will make us it will make it easy for us to understand. So assume that various analysis have decomposed previous sales data into the following components. Let's say a particular company for a particular company a 5% growth in sales is predicted. So they are predicting a 5% growth, right? 5% growth is predicted which is called as a trend component. So this is the first component that is coming into the picture that is the trend that you know the industry or the particular product category is increasing let us say 5% that is what uh, increase in the sales can be expected. But again there is a 10% decrease in sales is expected due to a business recession which is again we are talking about a cycle component. So businesses goes through recession and all right. So these cycles should be accommodated into your forecast. So here now we are again talking about 10 percent reduction minus in the sales figures coming from so first one is from trend this is from your cycle component. Then increased tensions in the middle east are expected to reduce sales by an additional 5 percent again you are kind of you know taking care of those reduction in sales by 5 percent owing to erratic events like that are happening which is beyond your country or be, which is beyond your control and then sales results are reasonably consistent throughout the year except the for the fourth quarter where the sales are expected to be 25 percent higher than the other quarters. So this is a seasonal kind of a component maybe because there is a let us say for India we have festivals in November, December right. So Diwali and all. So we may expect some more sales in those last kind of you know three months or quarter in the particular year. So you may expect 25 percent higher sales in that particular kind of you know quarter. So you are accommodating now a seasonal component and you are expecting 25 percent increase or plus in sales only in one of the four quarters right. So here you are targeting or you are ac actually kind of accommodating the seasonal component. And now once you have a figure last year figure you can work on this. So whatever figure you have like last year you have achieved x number of or x number of cells. So for here we are taking that in 2009 we were able to have this amount of figure in sales like right? the trend component suggests that 2020 sales will be 5 percent more. So we are kind of you know x into 1.05 that will give you a new figure that is y. Again for that y we are again expecting a 10 percent decrease right. So y which is a new figure into 0 0.90 which is reduction in the figure. So you get new figure z after accommodating this cycle component. Now with z you are again expecting 5 percent decrease because of the erratic events. So you said z into let us say 9.0. Uh, sorry 0.95 right 5 percent decrease we are getting let us say z alpha something like that a new figure and then again now you have this figure which is broken down across four quarters. So you have uh, z alpha 1 to z alpha 4 and you are expecting that this z alpha 4 will be 25 percent higher as compared to other and then you add some weightage of across you know average of this 25 percent to z alpha 4 and then you take a calculated call that you know across summing up all z alpha 1 to z alpha 4 what should be a ideal figure that a company wants to achieve. So this is how a decomposition method works these components that is what we are seeing here is trend cycle erratic and seasonal 
are usually accommodated or reincorporated into the figures to produce the sales forecast. And then coming to the final method of quantitative sales forecasting technique which is about regression analysis. Here if you look at there are multiple factors that affects particular sales or operations or maybe a particular business or even a particular product category. So how sales are getting affected? First maybe an environmental factor like you know control unit attractiveness, the position of the business in the market whether like you there is a tough competition coming into the picture you might be pushed back to the number 2 or number 3 as well. So this is something which is environmental factors which is beyond your control but you have some figures like you know how the past how in the past a particular competitor has performed. There are certain organizational factors that again affect your current sales like your marketing effort, your sales management effort and all. And then beyond that the salesperson factors plays crucial role here. It involves characteristics like role perceptions, aptitude, skill level of particular salesperson and even the motivation as well. These characteristics will ultimately get converted or reflected in the effort and the quality they show on the field and ultimately what kind of you know figures you are looking at. So how to accommodate these environmental factors, organizational factors and salesperson factors. So here we have some figures for the RAS from the last power past 2-3 years across each of these kind of you know variables or factors and then you create a regression equation right. So you said alpha is a constant and you have these three regression coefficients that actually conveys how let us say for example how environmental factor is going to affect then again how organizational factor is going to affect your sales and how salesperson effects are going to kind of you know affect your sales. So there are again two disadvantages of this method it incorporates only the independent effects like you no know, see these factors are consider separately right but there is again an interaction between how environmental factors and organizational factors work together. There might be an interaction between again how kind of you know salesperson factor interacts with organizational factors right. So if there is a less marketing effort salesperson will need to have put more efforts on the field right and they have to put more efforts if he is not putting more efforts again there is going to be a kind of you know missing on some sales opportunities. Again how these three factors together interact with each other you know combining more factors together. So these factors are not independent to each other they in a way in a practical sense are very much related or interrelated to each other. This is where a regression analysis does not take care and this type of equation is linear yet the determinant variable relationships are probably non-linear. So maybe we, we may need to look at some power functions where right you know so environmental factor will have some power of alpha the way it affects your decisions plus organizational factors will again have some power equations the power through which it affects your functions let us say beta and then we have salesperson factors which might influence the kind of you know uh, sales efforts in terms of gamma. So there is a in complex interrelationship between all these factors and there are again other factors beyond that which we are going to cover in the next session where we, we are going to talk about <coughs> environmental factors like how political, economic, social, uh, cultural factors can also influence your sales forecast. So summing up we have already kind of you know looked at what are the different sales forecasting technique and they are important because they help us to make informed decision like you know where we are going to go ahead what is the vision of the company in terms of achieving those sales forecast. And after having these techniques it is important to see why they, are why they are beneficial for any company. So benefits of having an accurate sales forecast are multiple. First improved decision making about the future. As I said or as we discuss even it, the sales forecast will again help your finance department, your supply chain, your production department or even your HR department as well. Reduction of sales pipeline and forecast risk right so that is another benefit. Alignment of sales, sales quotas and revenue expectations across those territories. Reduction of time spent on planning territory coverage and setting quota assignments. There is a benchmark that can be used to assess trends in the future. So as you are doing this exercise again and again even if you are missing the targets it gives you some confidence into the system that whatever figures you are kind of you know predicting they are mostly you are taking care of all the trends, seasonalities, events and everything. 
ability to it gives ability to focus a sales team on high revenue high profit sales pipeline opportunities resulting in improved win rates so it actually helps your sales people to go in the field with more confidence knowing more about the customer his past behavior his likelihood of placing a particular order and something like that so that sums up this objective of this session where we learned about how sales forecasting methods helps us to make informed decisions going ahead we will look at how we are going to use different tools again apart from the sales forecasting tools that can be used to craft strategic sales plan thank you